you. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious if folks have seen this before. It's uh, an illustration that's often used to help explain different terms used in the work of uh, advancing social change and racial equity. And I think one of the things we wanted to um, express to you all today is, you know, why racial equity and social justice, right? Um, so if you look at this illustration, um, and forgive me if you've seen this before or already know what this is all about, but we're just kind of level setting here. Um, across all four frames, uh, the game, perhaps baseball, uh, represents various resources and opportunities, say housing or quality education. The fence represents a barrier to accessing those resources and opportunities. And the three individuals can either represent individual people or communities of people. Uh, the first uh, box or frame on the left, uh, labeled reality, essentially tries to show how structural racism manifests in all of our lives, right? How structural racism gives folks either additional supports or obstacles that advantage or disadvantage them as they try to gain access to any given resource or opportunity. And one important note I'll make here is that these additional supports or obstacles are created by systems and structures, um, both present day as well as historically, right? Um, and that they are not the results of individual ability or effort. Uh, the next three frames, equality, equity, and liberation, um, are, are, are uh, illustrations that help uh, explain different approaches, perhaps, to social change, right? So the first, equality, is essentially about sameness, right? It provides the same solutions and supports for everyone, regardless of where they start or what they actually need. Uh, the next one, equity, um, also tries to get towards fairness and is mindful of the differential ways that people are situated um, and actually works to provide solutions and supports based on what people actually need, meets them where they are. Uh, and then there's justice, which is represented here um, in the liberation frame. And uh, this is work that uh, you know tries to remove the barrier completely the barrier, the obstacles, all of it completely. The approach is not only mindful of the differential ways that folks are situated, but understands that to truly improve outcomes for people, which uh, you know I think is this work of social change and philanthropy, um, it must confront the systems and structures that actually create the inequities in the first place. Um, as Beth had shared at the top, you know, ECCF has been engaged on in its own journey with respect to social change and racial equity. Um, and even as we do what we can to center racial equity in our work, we must not lose sight of what I hope all of us uh, here on this uh, virtual Zoom uh, screen are, are able to do um, with precious resources and not lose sight of uh, you know, what's possible. Uh, that resources can be directed to removing completely uh, the barriers to access and opportunity. And if not completely, you know, we can uh, do what we can. Uh, ultimately, I think we're all in this work to co-create a world in which uh, I think as Stacy said in the beginning, essentially, you know, everyone has what they need, that we are all thriving, that we all have access to joy um, beyond just basic needs, right? Um, next slide, please. So for many, uh, especially those uh, without lived experience, COVID and the racial reckoning of 2020 really exposed the deep systemic inequities that exist in Essex County and across the country. Um, but as we move further away from the urgent immediate response years of COVID and begin to think more deeply about our role in advancing both racial equity and social change, um, as well as resiliency for our county coming off of the intensity of the COVID pandemic. Uh, we're, we're reflecting on you know, a few more lessons, right? 
First, that these inequities are really not new, but are the results of inequitable systems, structures, and resource flows um, over generations. Second, that universal strategies can unintentionally leave out those most impacted. And we saw two very tangible examples of this uh, during our COVID response work. Uh, the first being unemployment benefits, uh, where the undocumented, uh, highly impacted communities of color were actually left out by design. And uh, PPP, or the Payment Protection Program loans, where we saw larger and more resource connected communities take advantage of the opportunity at the very beginning, and in so doing, received a disproportionate amount of the resources. Uh, third, uh, we're reflecting on the fact that while our communities of color and most marginalized communities are the most deeply impacted, and disproportionately so, they also represent the front lines of any attempt uh, at collective response. Throughout COVID, uh, they've proven to be critical and effective partners to us at ECCF and others as well in meeting their community's needs and have shown strength, innovation, and resilience in, in meeting uh, whatever challenges came their way. Next slide, please. So uh, as members of ECCF's family of funds, or as supporters and partners of ECCF more broadly, uh, we are all stewards of resources for Essex County. And to be effective and responsible stewards of these community resources, we need to consider two things um, or need to do two things. One, increasingly center the most impacted and most marginalized in our work and two, expand our understanding of how social change and systems change happens, as well as who is best equipped to lead that change. Uh, Stacy, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so the role of philanthropy. Again, for the last few years, uh, the philanthropic sector has been intensely focused on immediate crisis response to COVID. However, as we are all adjusting to this new normal, we have an opportunity and a responsibility to reflect on uh, what we've learned, how we can think about our philanthropy differently, and potentially the ways that philanthropy can even be complicit in perpetuating the systems and structures that create the very inequities we hope to address. Um, there are different approaches to social change that philanthropy can invest in, uh, from programs and direct services to systems change, a few of them are listed here. But regardless of the issue, we see real disparities in outcomes by race and ethnicity and other layers of marginalized identity. Uh, you can easily find uh, examples of this by skimming through uh, the aggregated data on our Impact Essex County website. Um, and yet, uh, despite all of the resources that have been redistributed over the years, of which philanthropy is a part, we are still finding ourselves faced with the same issues. So I think more and more philanthropists, both individual and institutional, are beginning to see that responsive giving alone is not enough to address such deeply entrenched social problems like hunger or, hopeless, or homelessness. More and more folks are exploring ways to go upstream, think about prevention, if you will, and address the root causes of these issues. So how to prevent disease rather than treat it, or how to improve access to quality education rather than provide remediation. And more and more of us are beginning to realize that in order to move the needle on any particular issue, we need to invest in actually changing the systems and structures that produce these outcomes as well as reconsider some of the ways we go about our work. 